This is the presentation for the paper Wolverine, Fast, Scalable, and Communication Efficient Zero Knowledge Proofs for Boolean and Arithmetic Circuits. Uh, I'm Chen Kai Wong. This is a joint work with Kang Yang, Zhou Sen Kat, and Xiao Wang. What is the zero knowledge proof? Uh, a simple definition is like this there are two parties, a prover and a verifier. For public circuit C, known by both parties, a prover P convinces the verifier V that it knows the witness W such that CW equals to 1. Um, with three properties, the completeness, soundness, and zero knowledge. Completeness means that if the prover has a correct witness W, then the circuit takes the input W outputs 1, and the verifier would be convinced. The soundness means that if the prover does not have a correct witness, then there is a negligible probability that the circuit would output 1 and the V would be convinced. And the proof of knowledge is a stronger property than soundness and it requires some additional effort. The zero knowledge property means no information is revealed except for the output of the circuit. There are many interesting applications of the zero knowledge proofs. Uh, for example, it can be used in a bug bounty program for a researcher to e prove the existence of a bug in the zero knowledge before it gets a reward. Uh, for the uh, machine learning settings, it can be used to do the private benchmark with either private dataset or private model. And uh, it can also be used to demonstrate the data poisoning attacks with some private dataset. Uh, also, the zero knowledge proof protocol can be used uh, for some cryptographic primitives, for example, to prove the knowledge of a path in the Merkle tree or to prove a secret uh, for a short integer solution problem. There are many existing proof systems, for example, there are DK Snarks, uh, the zero knowledge proof based on the interactive Oracle proofs, a special verifiable outsourcing protocol based on the GKR protocols, the MPC in the head paradigm, and the zero knowledge proofs from the Gabo circuits. Among all these protocols, there are usually the trade-offs between different resources. Uh, for example, regarding the round complexity, uh, is the protocol interactive or non-interactive? Regarding the proof size and the verification time, is the protocol succinct or somewhat succinct or non-succinct? Uh, regarding the computational efficiency, despite the computational complexity, we should also pay attention to the operation needed per gate. To compute each uh, multiplication gate or end gate, do we need the public key operations or the FFT or NTT operations or just the, the symmetric, symmetric key operations? And uh, for the setup assumption, uh, does the protocol need a trusted setup or not? Last but not the least, uh, for the memory efficiency, is the memory usage proportional to the size of the circuit, or the memory usage is proportional to the scenario when the circuit is evaluated in plain text with no cryptograph cryptography involved. Basically, there are two settings of zero knowledge proof. Uh, the first is as synchronous protocols, or some protocols which are easier to uh, be set up as a synchronous setting. Uh, these protocols are usually interactive protocols. They are computationally efficient and highly scalable. But usually they suffer from wrong communications and they need designated verifiers. Uh, another kind of protocols are potentially asynchronous. They can be made non-interactive and public verifiable. And also they tend to be succinct with short proofs and fast verification. Uh, but uh, their drawback is to have the long proof of running time and the large memory overhead, which is proportional to the circuit size. Our protocol falls into the first category. Asynchronous protocols are good, but in some scenarios, uh, the prover only needs to prove a knowledge to several designated verifiers, and uh, these parties can be online at the same time and the round communications that's allowed. Uh, in these situations, uh, Public verifiability is not a need, uh, but we need a protocol that is more efficient and more scalable. Here's our result. We design an interactive zero knowledge proof protocol for arbitrary Boolean or arithmetic circuits. Uh, it has a constant round communication with the interactive offline phase and the uh, almost non-interactive online phase. 
the running time is linear to the circuit size. For each uh, multiplication gate or AND gate, it only requires the constant number of AES operation and the constant number of feed field elements multiplication. And the memory usage is linear to the memory needed to evaluate the circuit non-cryptographically. Uh, aside from that, we also design a subfield vector oblivious linear evaluation protocol. Uh, it helps to boost the over protocol and uh, it can also be of independent interest. Now let me give you an intuition of our protocol design. We have already seen the definition of zero knowledge proofs. Now let me remind you the definition of a two-party computation in the MPC setting. Uh, two parties, Alice and Bob, jointly compute the function fxy with their private inputs, x from Alice and y from Bob. They compute this function without revealing anything beyond the output of the function. The two-party computation requires the privacy and the correctness, and there are ways to make the protocol secure against the malicious adversaries. We can immediately see that if we compute the circuit of uh, their node proof with the way we do in the two-party computation, a lot of requirements would already be preserved. Uh, in the two PC settings, there are two protocols, the GMW and the Garbo circuits. I've already mentioned the Zeranoid proof based on the Garbo circuit in previous slides. And for our protocol, we use the GMW protocol to build a, a Zeranoid proof protocol with less communication and uh, chip computation. An uh, important building block of our protocol is the subfield vector oblivious linear evaluation, or SVOLE. The basic functionality of the SVOLE is like this. The receiver has a global key delta, and the functionality inputs the delta and the randomly sample two vectors x and k, and it computes the vector m equals to k plus x multiplies with the delta. It outputs x and m to the sender and k to the receiver, so send and the receiver each receive a vector uh, that are uh, correlated. Uh, the SVOLE relies on the linear parity with noise assumption, and uh, it basically extends a small number of base SVOLE correlations into a large number of SVOLE correlations with the help of the LPN. The basic element in our protocol is the authenticated value, and uh, the authenticated values are authenticated by the information theoretic max. In this setting, the verifier has a global key delta. When the prover wants to authenticate a value x, it receives the mac of m x, which is the m x, and the verifier receives the local key of x, which is k x. It satisfies that m x equals to k x plus x multiplies with the delta. Uh, all the where values in the circuit will be encrypted with the information theoretic max. Uh, if the prover wants to open a value x, it sends the x along with its mac to the verifier. The verifier will check if this correlation holds. And if a malicious prover wants to modify a value x during the circuit computation, there is a neg negligible probability that it can provide the verifier with a correct MAC. For the value x with uh, information theoretic MAC, uh, we denote it by uh, x in a bracket and call it an authenticated value. There are many nice properties of uh, authenticated values. For example, they are additively homomorphic. Uh, it is free to do addition with a constant and multiplication with a constant. And also, these authenticated values can be efficiently generated by vector oblivious linear evaluation. All the operations on authenticated values are done in the pre-processing model. It means that either in the pre-processing phase, two parties use the SVOLE to jointly output the large number of random authenticated values, like the lambda in this case. In the online phase, to authenticate the new value x, the prover and the verifier fetch the authenticated lambda, and the prover sends the verifier the difference of x and lambda. Two parties can locally um, apply a addition between the authenticated value and a constant number to get the authenticated x. For the circuit computation, they use the same trick to deal with the input gate and the multiplication gate. 
in the pre-processing phase, uh, the prover and the verifier use the SVOLE to output random authenticated values lambda i and si. For the input gates, the prover uh, prepares the witness wi and use the authenticated lambda i to get the authenticated wi. For the multiplication gate, two parties pre pre prepare the authenticated si. The prover will locally fetch the value of uh, W-alpha and W-beta and uh, compute the product of them, which is the W-gamma, and uh, it inputs the uh, W-gamma to get the authenticated uh, output of the multiplication gate. For the addition gate, this can be done for free because the authenticated values are additively homomorphic. Now the only thing left is to ensure that the prover does not cheat in the previous steps because uh, it can basically input any value to deviate from the computation of the circuit. The verifier have to make sure that all the multiplication gates are computed correctly. Assume that there are three multiplication gates in the circuit, then the prover and the verifier has three original triples. Then they will conduct a procedure called the, the cut and bucketing, which is derived from the cut and choose. Uh, in this procedure, they will generate uh, L equals to CB plus D additional triples. And these additional triples will be sacrificed to check the correctness of original triples by a sub procedure called combined check. With carefully selected parameters, the soundness errors can be controlled. And also, there are other optimizations to check the multiplication gates when uh, the large field is used. Regarding the performance evaluation, we implement the zero-knowledge proof protocol for both the Boolean and the arithmetic circuits. Uh, for the Boolean circuits, the execution time is linear to the B length of the witness and uh, the number of end gates in the circuit. And, uh, it the performance is good even in the low network setting. And for the Boolean circuits, the interesting application is to prove uh, the knowledge of a path in the Merkle tree. And the running time is proportional to the number of nodes in the Merkle tree. And uh, the memory usage is very small because uh, it is only linear to the, the memory that is used uh, when the circuit is evaluated non-cryptographically. Also, there are many ZK-enabled applications like LabDeco and BlindCA. The zero-knowledge proof is used in their protocols. If our protocol can be applied in their schemes, then there uh, it would help uh, for both the execution time and the communications. For the arithmetic circuits, um, Again, uh, the execution time is linear to the witness length and uh, the number of multiplication gates in the circuit. And when the network is reaching the 5 megabit megabits per second, uh, the throughput is uh, nearly 1 million gates per second. We use the matrix multiplication to benchmark the performance of multiplication gates. We use the naive way to compute the matrix multiplication uh, by the complexity of n cube, and the, again the number uh, the running time is linear to the number of multiplication gates, and the memory usage is very small. Another example is to prove a solution to the SIS problem. Our protocol is more than an order of magnitude uh, faster than previous works uh, in all network settings. The last part is the follow-up work. After this work, we continue to start studying this line of research, and we designed the Quicksilver protocol, which applies for both the circuit-based model and the polynomial-based model. For the circuit-based model, the communication complexity is one field element per nonlinear gate. Um, there is a huge improvement in both the computation and the communication. We also designed the protocol to prove a set of polynomials uh, we can prove T polynomials with communication complexity linear to uh, n plus d, and n is the size of the witness, the d is the highest degree of the polynomials. The communication cost is not related to the number of polynomials.